Hello everyone and welcome once more to this very special event, part of the series of talks organised by the British Union of Spiritist Societies to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the birth of the French spiritist philosopher Leon Denis. I'm Adam Osborne and I'm here on behalf of the British Union of Spiritist Societies and today we're going to be joined by Daniel Stiegel who will be talking about Leon Denis a new perspective on pain, which is in fact the very last talk in this series of talks this year. So, you know, this is now the 11th one. We've been, we started in January and this is now the very last one. And like I said, this event has been organized by the British Union of Spiritual Societies, BUS, and is being streamed on both YouTube and Facebook in partnership with the Irish Spiritist Federation, Kardec Radio and Kardec Group. So please make sure that you give a thumbs up, like, share, and you know, tell everyone about this event because we want people to be watching it. And don't forget to subscribe to these YouTube channels as well. And you, know, you can always send us a hello in the comments or chat area. Just let us know where you're watching from. So you should be able to see a live, a live chat on your left if you're watching on YouTube or maybe just below or just below if you're on Facebook as well, and make sure that you stay with us until the very end as we have obviously a few announcements from the British Union and we will have the Q&A with Daniel. So let's introduce our guest. Daniel Stigo is from Sao Paulo in Brazil, where he has led activities for youth and has given lectures since he, since he was a teenager. Daniel has a degree in business another in physics, and is currently studying for an MBA in Chicago, America. And Daniel will today, like I said, will be talking about Leon Denis, a new perspective on pain. Remember, if you have any questions for Daniel or just want to say hello, please send them in the comments or chat area and we will get to them later. So please let us know if you're watching and where you're watching from. So let's bring on our guest. Hello, Daniel, how are you? And what can you tell us about this rather interesting topic? Hello, Adam. Uh, thanks. Hello, all. Uh, it's a great pleasure for being here to talk with you guys today. Uh, thanks for Bas for for the invitation and just encouraging you to to put questions on the Q and A. It would be very interesting to address them in the end. Um, and it's it's an amazing topic that I'm going to talk today. Uh, Leon Denis, a new perspective of pain. Um, it's 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 a topic that it's a lot based in Leon Denis' book uh, that you've studied a lot this uh, this time. That's Life and Destiny, and there are some chapters uh, focused on pain. Uh, so we're going to talk a lot about that tonight. So let me start sharing my screen. I have some slides for 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 the presentation to be a little bit more dynamic um okay so uh to start let's uh get a little passage of uh of jesus uh at chapter five of the gospel according to spiritism uh, that's titled blessed are the afflicted uh kardec comments a lot uh, the following speech of the jesus uh, where Jesus said that blessed are the meek, uh, blessed are the they which have hunger and thirst, uh, blessed are they which are persuaded. Uh, so uh, we read this at first and we, we feel it's a little bit strange, like how can Christ uh, say that the blessed are the afflicted, where uh, in our world we say the blessed are the ones that are rich, the ones that are uh, happy. Uh, so how can we understand that? Uh, what's the role of pain and uh, of affliction? Uh, so to address that, uh, I propose our study to be divided in three blocks. Uh, so we need to address two little questions that have been, they're not so little, uh, that have been uh, around for, for several times. So who are we? Uh, next, what's our purpose? And finally, what's the role of pain? So let's jump into those three questions and hopefully in the end, we'll have a good view of, of, of pain, particularly the ones that Leon Denis brings us. Uh, so let's start with the first question. Uh, who are we? So to understand us, we need to see that the, 
human complex is made up of three components, the spirit, the first spirit, and the physical body. Let's understand each one of those components. So let's start with the spirit. In question number 76 from the spirits book, Kardec asks, how can we define spirits? And the definition the spirits give us is, we can say that spirits are the intelligent beings of creations. They populate the universe beyond the material world. So that's the definition. And if we continue reading that, uh, that chapter, we can gather more information about spirits. So first, that spirits are the individual individualizations of the intelligent principle. It furnishes man with his principle of life and movement. Second, that the spirits are created by God. So they are particle of the divine essence. Also, it's incorporeal because it's as it's a sense differs from everything that we label as matter that's as atoms uh, it's indestructible because it preserves their individuality forever eternity uh, it's unique and indivisible so a spirit cannot be divided up however each spirit can radiate in different directions so like the sun that's only one uh, yet it radiates around uh, the earth and in and, and, and several spots, uh, the more advanced the spirit is, the more close to, uh, to this principle they can, have, they can be. And finally, the spirit is a center of vibrations. And this is a very important thing uh, because um, these vibrations uh, that each soul has its own, so each spirit has their different vibrations um, according to their degree of evolvement. Um, this makes them to communicate to each other. Uh, this makes them to attract uh, their friends, their sympathies and the loves uh, across the universe. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what the soul is. And a superior soul is the one that's able to vibrate in unison with all harmonies. Um, and just a, a little uh, explanation here, uh, the soul in question number 134 of spirit books is defined as uh, the incarnate spirit. So spirit and soul are the same thing, but the soul is incarnated inside a physical body. And Leon Denis uh, summarizes us as, as the soul, uh, that as, as the following. So is the soul which furnishes man with the principle of life and movement. The human soul is a willpower free of sovereign. It dominates all the attributes, all the functions, all the material elements of the being. So that's um, a little bit of, of the first element that compound the complex of the humans. Uh, let's talk very fast about the, the physical body. Uh, the physical body is made up of matter. So atoms, as we, we, we understand, uh, is an instrument for the spirit during the incarnation, therefore form a cord of according to the necessities of current life in earth. Oops. Um, it's also temporary and perishable, So uh, it's, it disintegrates when, when we die. Um, and it somehow overshadows uh, the powers of the soul. So such as memory, uh, transportation capacity, communication through telepathy. So there's a series of potentialities of our soul that are uh, overshadowed by the physical body and finally we can talk about the perispirit there is the relation between the spirit and the body uh, so the perispirit is our fluidic body uh, made up of a semi-material substance that serves as a first envelope uh, to the spirit and uh, links the soul to the body it pre-exists at the birth uh, serving as a mode for our physical body and it survives to death uh, following with the soul uh, during spiritual life. Uh, the very spirit is form and image of the spirit. It's the exact reproduction of the personal harmony and its light. So this is very uh, impactful to think that uh, everything we think and everything we act is helping build our very spirit. And if we think good things and if we are having good uh, acts, this will translate in a very beautiful, uh, lightning um uh, Per spirit. Uh, and finally, the per spirit keeps the impressions of everything that happens in the past. 
So our thoughts, desire, passions, good and bad acts, even the details that we might forget of this, this current existence, for example, what we ate for breakfast uh, 10 days ago that we might not remember or some small things that we forgot, everything, all the impressions are registered in the first period. So that's how, who we are, those three components, and this is very important uh, for us to move on uh, with the second question, that's what our pro purpose. So it's important to understand those two questions so that we can talk uh, to pain. Uh, so to understand our purpose, I will recall the fact that the spirit is created by God. And as the spirit comes from God, we can say that the spirit is a particle of the absolute. It's a divine spark. Uh, it's created by love and it's created to love. So uh, the soul is united to the great universal soul, uh, which is a vibration. So it's so its own vibration, as I mentioned before. Uh, and the origin of this soul, uh, as created by God, explains our irresistible needs of evolving. So the spirit has needs for light, for justice, for knowledge. Uh, for, for growing, to be in a better state. So uh, if you do a lecture, you want to do a better lecture. If you have a job, you want to be promoted. So we are always aspiring for something higher and better. Uh, and this is law of progress. That's high, high humanity. And it's very important for us to understand what's our purpose. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit. Question number seven, uh, 781 of Spirit Book. Um, Kardec asks uh, the spirits, uh, is humankind ever permitted to help the march of progress? And the answer is very categorical. No, but it can sometimes slow it down. So Kardec comments that since progress is a condition for human nature, no one has the power to oppose it. It's a living force that flood human, that flood human laws may hinder, but not default. So uh, in a certain way, no one can 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 stop the law of progress, as progress is a law of equilibrium. Um, and this means that uh, for um, that all the souls when we were created, they contain all the germs for future developments. So we are destined to know everything to acquire everything to possess everything. And this is very powerful. For example, um, this means that we are going to be able to know more math or physics than the best mathematician or physicist that ever been in Earth, because we have uh, the germ of mathematics there. We also be able to love people as Christ loved us, uh, because we have the germ of love there as well. So um, everyone will one day become perfect and possess everything. Um, and our lives, the objective to be of our lives is the increasing manifestation of these germs of what there is of divine in us. So that's the main goal of each of our individual lives. And then Kardec asks in the question 116, uh, if all spirits, if there are some spirits that remain forever in a lower orders, and the answer again, super objective, no, all will become perfect. So for every soul, no matter how low in scale they are, there is a great future prepared there. So uh, this gives us uh, the idea that there is a vast extent of resources that germinate in us. And perhaps we'll be, we would be amazed uh, if we knew all this potential that it's inside of us. Uh, instead of being fearful and, and thinking that we are weak, uh, we would understand our strength uh, and feel that we really can do a good job creating our future. So that's uh, the fundamental thing of uh, what's our objective. Uh, and finally, we can, oops, we can step into the last question. That's the one I'm going to spend a little bit more time. That's what's the role of pain? Uh, and more importantly, what does Leon Denis talks a little bit about? What's the perspective of pain? So Leon Denis starts with the observation that all living things on earth, so from animals to man, everything suffer. Uh, so the animal is subjected to an ardent battle for life, to find food, shelter. Um, 
also sorrow follows us, uh, each one of us. It's not exclusive of one person or the other. Uh, but nevertheless, as I just mentioned, uh, God is love and for love created the universe and formed the beings. So how can it be that there is so much pain uh, if the law is really uh, love? So it looks like a contradiction uh, that we'll try to explain. So the approach Leon Denis uses is to think, what about if pain did not exist? So how would be the world if there was no pain? So first of all, he mentioned that if this happened, there would no be society. He said that the society was formed because we had threats of beasts. We need to, we had hunger, we had floods, we need to find food, shelter, and this made individuals to be banned together with other individuals. Um, and our common lives also require us to, to do common things. Uh, and that's where civilization developed. So all the arts, all the science, all the industries, everything uh, developed to meet this need. Uh, also, he mentioned that if there was no pain, uh, love and work would not develop. How, how would be this? So the general tendency for man is to shut himself in a narrow circle of individualism and of self. And enjoyments, pleasure, idleness only tighten these limits. So if everybody had uh, everything, uh, so uh, you don't need to eat, you don't need to, to, you don't have the physiological needs, and you also do not suffer, so you have all money, you have all health, you have everything, uh, there would be no point of working because you would not need to work, and you also have no point on helping others because no one would need your help. Uh, everyone would have everything. So this would somehow tighten uh, the circle of individualism and self that we just mentioned. So um, if our destiny is to march toward a goal um, without stopping our way uh, towards perfection, um, and the joys uh, would just immobilize us and make us stable and, and, and still stopped in, in where we were, uh, the pain breaks this circle. So the pain comes uh, and the sadness and the sufferings inspires the nobility of feelings. So if the soul lived free of evils, it would remain inert, passive, ignorant. So that's a reason of, 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 being, of, 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 of the pain. So it makes us love, it makes us help the others. When, when there is a person that we love that's close from us, a son, a wife, uh, a mother, a brother, a friend that's ill or that needs something. It's where love appears and uh, that germs that we talked about um, flourish and we try to help them somehow. So that's another thing. But it doesn't stop like that. So Leon Denis also says that uh, if there wasn't pain, there would be no warnings about excess that we, that we make. So physical suffering can be an effort of nature uh, to save us from excess. Without it, we would abuse of our organs and sometimes we'll abuse them to the point of destroying our body before time. Um, so if we ate a lot and we had no bad feelings or um, if we stood too much time awakened and sleep so few and we felt nothing, we would destroy our body. Um, and even if we, in fact, be able to damage the body until we are sick and ill, uh, this, this pain can become beneficial uh, if it causes us to realize and to detest the vices which, causes this, which cause this pain. So it's very important there. And, and the first thing uh, that Leon Denis mentions is that if we suppress sor sorrow, we would suppress at the same time one of the most worthy things of admirations in our world. That's the courage of supporting and overcoming the pain. So every time that we support and overcome a challenge and, and something painful, uh, it's when we, we feel good, we feel happy, and it's our path to heaven. Uh, but um, it's, it's, uh, if we didn't have the pain, we would not have these this, this good feelings when we overcame something. Um, so that's uh, that's that's a little bit about how how nature works, right? You, when you have a challenge, you are initially unhappy. Uh, sometimes you are revolt, uh, but then when you climb, 
the hill, you look behind and you feel very happy and joyful about all, all the things you've, you've overcome and uh, everything that made you understand uh, the truth and the learnings that you that you were able to uh, to achieve during the path. Uh, so as we can see, the world without pain uh, would be very hard for us to make progress, for us to achieve the the, the goal of, of of being a perfect spirit. Um, so once we have the pain, let's analyze some attributes and characteristics and utilities of this pain. Uh, that Leon Denis mentioned in, 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 in his two chapters that I, I mentioned uh, from the book Life and Destiny. So, first of all, sorrow is a law of education and equilibrium. Without doubt, the faults of the past fall upon us. Suffering is, also, also, uh, is often the consequence of violation that we've made of the eternal order. order. However, if we notice that the pain is shared by all, we should consider that it's an agent of general development, a condition for progress. We see like very high hierarchy spirits that come here and in fact have some pain, have also pass through, through challenging situations. But they are here to give us the example of how to overcome this. They are the missionaries. Um, so uh, we can generalize uh, the 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 pain as a law of education and equilibrium. And Leon Denis tells us, when someone asks him, why sorrow? Leon Denis answers, uh, why do we polish the gem? Why do we sculpture, sculpture the marble or hammer the iron or melt the glass? So everything that looks painful, it's something that's useful to polish uh, the glass, the marble, the iron, and also to polish our um, our ourselves. So that's how uh, how how it works. Um, second, sorrow resi resides in us. With or with our will, we can control it. So we have sorrow and pleasure that are two extreme forms of sensations, uh, but both of them are less in the exterior and more in us. So I grew up hearing my mother said that like life is 10% what happens with us, 90% what we do with, with what, what, what happened with us. So uh, we can train ourselves to regulate our sensation, discipline our, our feelings, control our sorrow and pleasure to limiting their effects. So we can leverage our will, our willpower, uh, so that we can overcome these things and take the pain to our advantage and make it as a mean of elevation to achieve our objective. Uh, a third thing that uh, that's mentioned uh, is that God has placed beside rare and fugitive joys, frequent and prolonged sorrows. So we have much more sorrows than joys in our planet. And this makes us realize that our world is a passageway and not a goal. So another role of, of, of pain is for us to realize that this is transitory, it's just temporary, is a passageway to get us uh, to, uh, another, to another state. A fourth point here uh, is that uh, in the measure that we advance in life, uh, joy diminishes and sorrow increase. So, as you get old, the body becomes heavier. Uh, then you come long hours of inaction and suffering. And this makes old people usually uh, to enter into themselves to review their lives, to make an analysis of what are the good things they did, what things they could have done better. And Melanie mentioned that this process is necessary for the soul in order that it may acquire the clear seeing judgment of the events of its terrestrial careers. So this helps with reflection and self-awareness. The weakest the body is, the strongest the spirit can be and the free and more free the spirit can be. So this is another characteristic of, of, of pain. Um, another thing is that it relieves a heavy and regretful conscience. So how does this work? Sometimes we are, uh, when we are, 
uh, in the other life after we we die uh, we have a conscience of everything that 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 happened and uh, many spirits ask to have a new opportunity uh, and to have sometimes a quick and painful reincarnation uh, to rescue the past uh, to to repair what they did uh, wrong so it's not a vengeance uh, of the law but it's a way for the soul to liberate liberate itself from from the suffering so they could ask for 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 coming back so that's another utility of 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 work uh, also it does not follow the law of retaliation so it's not that you you did something bad something bad will need to happen to you necessarily the same way uh, and the social conditions would not would not and the, the historic evolution would oppose to that uh, so for each of us uh, sorrow has a different method. Uh, it's it's varied as the individual, uh, but it acts very efficiently in manner for each one of us. So it's a different kind of pain for each of us. Um, also, suffering will be necessarily as long as man does not think and act in harmony with eternal law. So while we are still selfish and still defend the personal interest, when uh, in our society there will still need to be of pain so to extinguish the evil society we must elevate the human soul to consciousness of its role make it understand that its fate depends upon itself and that its felicity will be always proportional to the extent of its uh, uh, triumphs over it itself and its devotion to others so um, we really need to improve and make an effort to make others to improve uh, so that we can liberate all the society from pain. Uh, and finally, it shows the power of the true faith. So um, Leon Denis says that in the moments of suffering, um, you can measure how robust a faith is, the faith of an individual, but also the faith as a, a philosophy or as a, a religion itself. So um, you can see the power and the value of philosophical theories and religious doctrines to see which one is the does the best job uh, to comfort people uh, in the case of, of pain and how much individuals can be uh, confident when they are passing through, through a pain situation. Um, so that's an uh, overview of, of some characteristics and, and, and utilities of, of pain that Leon Denis mentions. Uh, and after reading all of this, we might ask, um, how could spiritism can help us in moments of pain? Like, how can I apply what I just learned? All these this, this things sounds, seem very beautiful, but when I'm sick or someone close to me is sick or where someone... Uh, that I love dies, or when I'm, I'm having trouble, or struggling, I'm feeling pain, how should I behave? How should I apply this in the real world? Um, and Leon Denis helps us a lot on this. So let's give a summary of, uh, of, of, of the Spiritism uh, thought about, about this. So um, Spiritism offers, er, offers us a reason of living and suffering which makes us a life an objective uh, worthy of the soul and of God. So it, we, we have a transitory life where we uh, have some objectives here uh, to improve ourselves. And that's the main uh, goal of our, our current life. Um, well, so... Um, what are the recommendations that uh, Leon Denis gives for, for men in those conditions? He says the following. Man, search everywhere upon your route for invisible beings, powerful and good, who are traveling beside you. In the difficult passage, they might, uh, mighty vibrations will sustain your trembling steps. Open your soul to them. Put your thoughts in accord with their thoughts and soon you will feel the joy of the presence and he continues learn how to suffer 
I do not say seek sorrow, but when it comes and stands inevitable, uh, inevitably in your path, receive it like a friend. Learn to appreciate its austere beauty, the, to size its secret knowledge, uh, study its hidden works, and in place of revolting against it, associate your will with the aim fixed by sorrow and seek to draw from it. Um, study its hidden works and in place of revolting against it, associate your will with the aim of fixed by sorrow and seek to draw from it all the profit it can offer to the spirit of heart. Force yourself to be an example for others, and by your acceptation of it, you, your coverage and your confidence in the future. And he finalizes. If in hours of trial, we know how to watch the mysterious action of sorrows in ourselves, we would better comprehend the sublime work of education. Sorrow always strikes our most sensitive point. The hand which directs the chasel is that of an incomparable artist. It never wearies until all the angles of our characters are rounded and polished. So let's reflect on all that that Leon Denis said. Uh, our sorrow uh, makes us uh, feel better and progress. Um, and we should reflect on that so that we can uh, become better uh, and that we can make some progress. Uh, so when when we have a pain, uh, what we should do, we should not look for pain. So we should not uh, try to hurt ourselves and should not seek for that. But when it comes, and it will come, because we are in a world that we need to, to progress, we should look at ourselves and see why, why I'm feeling this. What is this pain trying to teach me? Why uh, it's hurting? What I should learn with this? And answering to this question and reflecting on that, uh, there could be some uh, some help in how you can learn with this pain. And we should never forget that some good spirits are around us and that are supporting us during our incarnation. And we can always call them and pray to them and ask them for strength, for support, uh, so that they can help us to make progress, so that they can help us to 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 evolve. So what we should do is uh, um, call them and ask them to support us. And there are two things that can happen. One is we can have their intuition and answers can arise for us, or we can also have uh, emergence of our conscience because remember, we are spirits that lived a lot prior to this incarnation. So there are some uh, things that can emerge uh, to us and, and can make us feel comfortable and better. So that's the main story here. Uh, so we should uh, understand that God is love. Spiritism does not bring, uh, does not come to the world uh, to make us suffer or uh, to make, to say that we need to be unhappy, uh, but it says it says that uh, we our goal is pro to be to progress and the matter and uh, the uh, the sorrow are means to get us to to this perfection faster. Otherwise, would be stopped and and still uh, and and that's uh, a little bit of, of of the summary here. And now I'll be stopping sharing screen uh, and I'll be happy to address uh, questions you, you might have uh, for the Q&A. So Adam, uh, feel free to, to jump in and, and, and put some questions here. My microphone was muted. There we go. Uh, no, thank you for that. Um, very short and succinct. And I think that's very much in the way of Leon Denis anyway, he loved to just get straight to the point and say, look, no, come on. You've got things around you to help you understand things. So here you go, understand. So thank you for that. Um, that, that was actually quite insightful. And yes, you know, we have to remember, we have to go back to remember, especially from within spiritism, where we come from, what we are. We are this spirit that's incarnate. We have the peri-spirit, et cetera, et cetera. So 
you know. Um, so anyone who's watching, if you have any questions or any hellos, please send them now. Now is your time for that. Let's put up the little banner so that people actually remember. There we go. Um, so we have just a couple of people with us today. So let's say hello to Florijana, to Antonio, to Steven, to Marina, to Monica, Elizabeth, and Eduardo, and Valeria. Thank you so much for being with us today, this afternoon. Uh, let's go now to, uh, to the announcements on behalf of the British Union. Uh, if I just bring them up. I do apologize. Here we go. Now, if I actually add them to the green, there we go. So, here we go. Just a couple of short announcements. Uh, obviously, do send any questions you have now for the Q&A. Uh, we'll come to that in just a moment. So, Spiritual Light takes place every Wednesday at 9 p.m. with Charles Kempf, Elsa Rossi, Sylvia Gibbons, and Stephen Patozo. And that is on the Facebook and YouTube channels of the British Union of Spirit Society, the Irish Spiritist Federation, Cardiac Radio, and various other places as well. And Time to Talk is a fortnightly live from the Spiritist Society of London, looking specifically at mediumship, and that takes place every two, every two Tuesdays, or sorry, every other Tuesday at 8.30pm here in London time, UK. And as I said at the start of the show today, this is the very last talk from this series of Leon, Leon Denis Talks for the 175th anniversary of his birth. Um, you can catch up on all the previous talks. If you haven't seen them yet, go over to the Facebook and YouTube channels of Bus, Kardec Group, Kardec Radio, and the Irish Spiritist Federation. And here you can see the covers of all those wonderful talks with Charles, Flavio, Vanessa, Umberto, Roberto, Munir, Dan, Emmanuel, Faye, Alexandri, and of course, we have Daniel with us today already. And, however, next month, on the 11th of December, there will be a roundtable discussion with some of those speakers, with Alexandri, with Charles, Dan, Faye, Flavio, Umberto, Munir, Roberto, and Vanessa. So that will be on Saturday, 11th December, at 4pm, on the same channels where you are watching us right now. So please make sure you come along and ask all the questions you have about these Leon Denis talks. From other groups here in the UK, our good friends, the Spiritist Society of Bournemouth, in conjunction with the Pool Christian Spiritualist Church, are still having their talks every couple of weeks on Facebook and YouTube, looking primarily at the Joanna Giangeli series of, sorry, the psychological series by the spirit Joanna Giangelis. Uh, their most recent one was yesterday with our good friend Sylvia Gibbons from London. And so the next one will be on the 19th of November. We would like to remind everyone about the High Five charity campaign by us here at Kardec Group, which ra raises funds for two important charity groups in Brazil who help hundreds, and I mean hundreds of people with from their local poor communities with the basic necessities such as food, housing, work, just the simple things. And we really need your donations. And I mean really need your donations. Please, 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 if you can do donate just a small amount each month, that's what we want. We call it high five because, well, you know that feeling when you give someone a high five? That's what we want to give to others. So how can you help? Just go to www.cardec.org.uk slash high five to get more information about how to don donate, more information about the campaign, about these two groups, which are Grupo Espiritu Shela from Salvador, Bahia, and Instituto Multiron from Curitiba, Paraná. And you can transfer, you can send us money directly, hit through us here at Cardec Group. We are a charity. We can accept your donations. You can send it direct by bank transfer, via PayPal, or if you are in Brazil or have an account in Brazil, you can help these charities 
as well. No, please, please, please. They need our support. And you know what? You know how it is. Do you know? Do you want to know how you feel when you get support? That's how you feel. That's how you feel. And that's how these people feel when they get your support. So please, come on. Five pounds a month? That's not much. That's all we ask. So please go to www.cardec.org.uk slash high five straight after this live to make your donation. And of course, while you're there, you can find out about Insightfully Speaking, a podcast created by us here at Cardec Group, where I have my two wonderful co-hosts, Annie Sinclair and Umberto Schubert. And each time we are joined by some of these wonderful guys you can see on see on the slide right there. So Charles, Dan, Natasha, Stefan, Tanya, Florenzo Anton, he's the one who runs uh, Grupo Spiritus Shela, Flavio, Danusa, Ingo Meyer from Germany. That episode is not out just yet. It will be coming out very soon. And the director, Wagner Gersis. If you want to know what we've been talking about, just search for Insightfully Speaking by Cardec Group. You can find it on all the good podcast systems as well as on YouTube. In two weeks' time, there will be the second Virtual International Spiritist Medical Congress. You can find more, inf more information about this by going to smainternational.org. So sma-international.org. You can find all the details about that event. That'll be on November 20th and 21st. However, ladies and gentlemen, we have an even bigger announcement, which, as you're with us, we'd love to share. Spiritism X will also be taking place on those same very same days. This is the this is the event by Kardec Group, our TEDx event, where we have short and insightful talks by very knowledgeable people. And our theme this year is understanding our multidimensional journey. And like I said, this is a TEDx style event, and this is going to be the third year of us running this event. The first year was back in 2019. Last year was online. The first year was face-to-face. -face. If you have not seen these before, you can find the videos on the Kardec Group YouTube channel. So how do you find out more information about this event that we're having in two weeks from now? Yep, two weeks from now, we'll be having part of it exactly two, two weeks from now, just go to spiritismx2021.eventbrite.co.uk. Spiritismx2021, the X is very important, .eventbrite.co.uk. And of course, when you register, you have the option of being entered into the prize draw. What is the prize going to be? Register and you can find out. And here are those 16 wonderful guests that we have lined up this year. So we have Alexander, Anai, Annie, Charles, Dan, Flavio, Fl Federico, Georgia, Umberto, Lolita, Luciani, Natasha, Pekka, Roberto, Sonia, and Susanna. And this event will be on YouTube on various channels and we'll be announcing those channels very soon and split over four blocks. So block one saturday 20th of november at 1 p.m gmt block two at 4 30 p.m gmt block sorry block three that should be on sunday is going to be at 1 p.m and block four will be at 4 30 gmt so please we hope that you can come and join us and of course if you want any information about Spiritism here in the UK, you can contact the British Union of Spiritist Societies at www.bus.org.uk. That's bus with two S's, B-U-S-S. -S. You can contact them by email or you find on Facebook or YouTube as well. And remember, most groups are still having their activities online, and you can find all the information about all group, all British groups on the BUS website, and contact them if you're interested in studying a little bit more. Okay, let's see who else has been saying hello. We've had, had someone else. Uh, Mardel Car Carmen, thank you for being with us as well. Eduardo, Elizabeth, Monica, yep. So let's see, we have we have a comment here from Eduardo. It says, 
would be great if this spirit, spiritual stoicism proposed by Denis were understood and adopted in our societies. I think if more people understood spiritism and especially the works of Leon Denis, that may help quite a few people. So some great talks, some thank yous. Oh, we have a question here from Antonio. Sorry, with a couple of spelling mistakes. Um, can you talk about the use of agents such as chemotherapy and other available means of reducing pain? Yeah, so thanks a lot, Tony, for your question. Uh, it's, I think you are talking a little bit about uh, in a scenario of treatment when you have cancer or you need some uh, any kind of medication that's generalized, not just the chemotherapies, to other ones as well. Uh, so everything we talk here uh, of the useful uh, role of the pain uh, to help us progress and to help us achieve uh, our goal of, 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 of being a perfect spirit um, does not exclude uh, or it's complementary uh, with the physical care. So um, if you are passing through uh, a physical disease, that requires uh, you to go to the doctor, to take medications, to, to, to do exams. Uh, this is something you need to do anyways, uh, but all the spirit's faith and all the, the praise and, 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 and asks that we, we talked here uh, can help in your treatment. Um, and and you, all, you should always ask uh, protection so that you can have so that you can be resilient with your treatment, so that you can be a strength, a strong uh, to pass through all of this. So that's, uh, that should be the focus, but should never abandon uh, the chemotherapies and all the other treatments that uh, the, the material medicine proposes, propose you to do. So it's a compliment. So thanks for your question. Hope to have addressed it. Yeah, and I think that's what we can understand from both Denny and the books of Kardec that we have to accept the situations that we go through and all these kinds of treatments that we take, whether it's uh, homeopathic, allopathic, or whatever, we have to do with good faith. We have to do in a way so that we can make the most of the situation, of the scenario that we're going through, both in understanding it and otherwise, if we rebel against it, the medicine's not going to work, is it? Exactly that. What makes us progress is not the pain for the pain, uh, but the way we 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 handle the pain and how we we learn from it. Right? If, if you if you have the pain, but you are um, you are reluctant, you you don't have faith, you don't believe it can have a utility for you. Uh, that's that's not something that's going to be a lesson learned. Learn. So you probably need to to pass through this all over so that you can take the learnings from that. Absolutely. And I, I can talk about this from a personal perspective because I actually live with chronic pain. I, I have many days where I can't even walk. Uh, not many people know this, but this is how it is for me. And using spiritism, I can understand that this happens for a reason. If I was to just to complain about it all the time, I'm not going to get anywhere. If I accept that I may need to take some kind of treatment, some kind of spiritual treatment as well, some way to elevate myself above the pain, to understand, is there something that I'm supposed to be learning from this? And you mentioned something in this, uh, a quote from Denis, that if in the times, in the hours of trials, we actually worked with ourselves to understand this how, why, what we can learn, because the goal is to progress physically and spiritually. The Spirits book teaches us this. We have this hierarchy. We're still quite low down. We need to progress somehow. We're not going to do that if we're just going to sit around complaining. So, yeah, we have to just get on with, get on with our lives and enjoy it as much as we can. Okay. 
we don't have any other questions. I don't have any other questions. Do you have any last considerations for us? Oh, I, I would like to, to thank you all. I think uh, I, uh, the most the one that most benefits from this study as any other study. Uh, it's always amazing when you sit down to, to learn and study and read. Uh, I would strongly recommend the reading of those two last chapters of, of Leon Denis' book uh, of, of, of Life and Destiny. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a very different to listen us talking and read it. Read it. Uh, I, I read this book when I was recovering for, from, a, from a liver disease I had in 2019, um, and it personally helped me a lot. It was super important for, uh, for giving me strength and, and uh, an understanding of the overall situation. Um, and, um, and yeah, I think you should have the big, the big takeaway for me of all the discussion we had is that we are stronger than we believe and that uh, we have several very good spirits around us that really help us and that really they're, they're really there for supporting us. So uh, in all the moments we have pain and, and hard time, we should leverage this, this, this thing that's in us and also uh, count and rely on, on those uh, spirits that are our friends uh, to, to pass through anything. So uh, any, anything that uh, God knows our strength, so he, he knows uh, what he can put on our, on our, for us to carry. So he's never going to put something that we cannot handle. Uh, so we need to have faith that we are able to handle the toughest pro problems, the toughest challenges, and always try to analyze and step back and see what's the reason that I'm passing through that. Why, why, why is that? Uh, and uh, this can give you answers and um, this can give you can give you hope uh, and uh, always rely on people that are around you but also uh, the, the the spirits that are our friends that, that help us in the tough moments so thanks a lot for 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 for, the, for trusting me and assuming the risk of calling me tonight I hope uh, I was able to to pass uh, a little bit of, of my studies to you all. Uh, I'm available uh, to answer and address any additional questions later on. Um, and I wish you all best. Okay. Thank you so much, Daniel. I'll put you back on backstage right now, but don't go away. I'll come and talk to you at the very end. Well, ladies and gentlemen, well, and also just to remind that the main book that Daniel was talking about just then is The Problem of Life and Destiny. And we had with us two guests talking about that during this event. So on the event from May, we had Roberto Watanabe talking about the first part of the book. And on the 5th of June, we had Munir Gariba talking about the second part of that book. So The Problem of Life and Destiny by Leon Denis well friends that is it just leaves me to give once more a big thank you to daniel stegall for being with us to the british union of spiritist societies for organizing this event for the irish spiritist federation kardec radio and kardec group for transmitting the event and thank all of you who've been with us today now, don't forget, I'll be back with you on the 11th of December, along with all those previous speakers from this year, with this closing round table, is how we're going to put it. A nice round table where you can pose all of your questions from any of the works of Leon Denis. And also, I have to say this, don't forget that in two weeks' time, Spiritism X 2021 will be here, and we hope to see you there. So, thank you for being with us. Keep safe, and I'm very sure that I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye-bye.